Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making the film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm a little embarrassed to say I didn't know the guess who was from Winnipeg. Yeah, it's uh, Winnipeg's only celebrity, I think. Uh, <laughs> other than Guy Madden, of course. Of course, yeah. Um, I actually, I feel like I learned a lot about Winnipeg, though I'm not <laughs> quite sure how much of it is true. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but maybe we'll find out. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I, I want to start by asking you how these three stories, these locations that you have us thinking about, uh, Montreal, Winnipeg, Iran, uh, just first connected for you, where they emerged, um, I guess, w which one came first? Yeah, well, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's sort of a long story. I guess um, I, uh, the, the seed, the seed of the whole film is uh, this story my grandmother told me about <clears throat> when she was a child during the depression in Winnipeg. Uh, she and her brother found a two-dollar bill frozen in the ice, and they went on this kind of city-wide odyssey to get it out, and they ended up getting defrauded by this hobo, and it sort of led them to this, you know, and then they thought about how maybe the hobo needed it more than them, and so they were all very poor. Anyway, um, it, I always liked the story, and it was kind of, I don't know, it was just something about it enchanted me, and then uh, later on when I kind of encountered... Um, these Iranian films, I think of Khani Dus Kojast and you know the White Balloon and um, all these great uh, you know films about children facing adult dilemmas uh, produced by the Kanun Institute. Um, there was something about uh, those films which echoed back through my mother, my grandmother's story on the opposite side of the world, and uh, that was something that was very enchanting to me, and um, and so. Um, everything kind of emerged out of that, and all the stories in the film are either, uh, you know, from my family's history or uh, or my own life. There's sort of a, you know, a very directly autobiographical stream, and then uh, the character Pirouz plays Masoud, the tour guide. That sort of comes from my father, who is this, you know, uh, big believer in Winnipeg and its bland monuments, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that's my little tribute to him, and then and then it's sort of mixed in with dreams, and uh, but a lot of this, you know, we kind of wrote, uh, you know, uh, very much uh, during the production of the film itself as well. So, um, well, I, I've also heard you talk about how a trip you took years ago to Iran also was a pretty formative experience. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, I went I went to Iran um, as a very naive. 21 year old um, and I, I, I had this dream of studying cinema in Iran I wanted to go to film school there and and uh, I very swiftly came to the conclusion that that was much more complicated than I thought it might be um, but that was great I met a lot of uh, really amazing people and um, it sort of set my life on this course to have this kind of dialogue I guess you could say with with Iran and particularly through cinema and also through friendships and uh, and so forth, and uh, and of course it set me on on course to collaborate with Pierre and Ila and Sylvain on on this uh, this movie. So so yes, in a, in a in a weird way, I, I ended up I did kind of go to to film school um, in Iran, but through friendship rather than through you know university. So can you tell us how you met Ila and Pierre and how this collaboration began with the script? Oh, maybe you'd like. Please. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I met Sylvain at a dinner uh, randomly, and um, I, I don't know, we were talking about just, I had just arrived in Montreal uh, in search of, um, you know, as a young uh, film and art student, um, uh, search of uh, also Iranian cinema in, in a way, and then we, we were talking about Iranian cinema, and um, and Sylvain got really excited, and he t took out the script from his uh, from his bag, and he's like, oh, "I just met with this great, uh, you know, Winnipeg uh, filmmaker Matthew, and he wants to make this film that happens in Winnipeg, but it's in Farsi. So I, I want you guys to meet." So, um, and then I, I mean, I, I re read the, this is 12 years ago, so uh, the you know the old uh, version of the script that has, uh, I mean, all the main elements here and. Um, and we met, and it, we shared this love for Iranian cinema, and um, and our friendship kind of started there. And 
uh, and ELA also, um, you know, and it kind of has, has been, this has been developing for the past, uh, yeah, decade, you can say. Let's not forget that Sylvain put us in line for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's a, it's a recipe that's like slowly cooking, but it makes it very, very tasteful and complex. And like Iranian cuisine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sylvain is, you know, one of the great producers of Quebec and Canada and uh, really got behind all our craziest ideas. It's really great when the producer says, there should be more turkeys, you know? <laughs> well choreographed, too. And donkey also. <laughs> uh, well, can you maybe talk more about this version of the script that is that you made 12 years ago. Um, I guess, Sylvan, what was your reaction to that? What did that look like? Uh, um, I have to say, well, I mean, narratively speaking, it was very different, although there has, there, the quest was kind of like similar. There was some, some rows that led to this film that are also similar, but really what connected the whole creative process is really the spiritual sort of connections that we created along the way with these amazing people and all the other ones that you don't see tonight that really participate in crafting this film very, again, very slowly and sort of like, we're just taking our time to make things, you know, the, the way they, they feel most connected to every one of us, you know, well, this sounds maybe a little hippie, but, but no, really, it's a, I think it's, a, it's an important process when we create something like the film does not belong to any of us. It just, it's just it's its own thing, right? And we're, we're kind of like all proud parents, sort of, you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see this. So, yeah, some similarities, but at the same time, uh, it's also completely different. We just went with the flow, yeah. Matt, Matthew, you, mean, you mentioned that this is a film made with friends, and I guess I'm just curious, as you were writing this, did you each envision yourselves in the roles that you play, or did that develop later on? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, most of the cast is our friends. Um, most of the people who are in the movie are people we know personally. And, um, you know, it was a strange process. In, in a way, we didn't really think too much about um, who would play who while we were writing, but then when we went, when we started casting, uh, we started to rewrite the script uh, based on who we thought would be interesting. I mean, it's mainly non-actors. There's a few professional actors in it. There's Mani Suleiman Lou, who's a, a genius, like a, just a brilliant uh, Quebecois actor, and Daniel Fichot, who plays the head bureaucrat. Mani plays the teacher, and Daniel Fichot plays the head bureaucrat of the Quebec government. Um, and those are, are real pros. And Saba Vahed Youssef, who plays uh, uh, Nazgul, also she's a kind of, you know, she's a pro. Uh, but everybody else was kind of acting more or less for the first time. And um, and it was really amazing to put it all together and and sort of figure out how to adapt the script to non-actors. You know, like uh, we can sort of think of people. I'm sure you can think of people in your lives who are not necessarily actors by profession, but they can perform, you know what I mean? Like they can tell a good story, they have a sense of timing, this kind of thing. So we were, we were trying to kind of fill all the roles with people like that, people who had some, you know, um, singular spiritual quality that was fascinating to us. And Ila can talk a little bit about that. She was one of the casting directors. Um, um, but, but it was really, the, the script kind of, uh, really kind of came alive, I would say, when we were casting it. I would like to talk about Hemela, that some of you uh, probably know, sir, the, the woman who sat uh, near the turkey. Uh, she has a restaurant in, uh, uh, in Montreal for like 35 years old. Me and Pius worked there and suffered there <laughs> for so many years. But anyways, why, uh, she's a very good friend of us. And uh, when Matthew uh, said, okay, I need somebody to sit near the turkey, <laughs> I said, say, okay, Hemela, for sure, <laughs> because uh, it was it was kind of like a reality. Because when she said, "I roasted millions of turkey in my life and made halim, which is an Iranian breakfast with turkey," that was a reality. You know, <laughs> we didn't fake anything. So that's what one of the she had all the motivation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, some roles really went like that. Or uh, for example, uh, Nima. The cake seller, the guy who, uh, he's a very good friend of us, and uh, when uh, Matthew suggested, we need, a, we need a cake seller who 
really is very enthusiastic to sell cake to do what after? Maybe just buy a necklace for her girlfriend? So, okay, this is Nima. Let's go for Nima. So, <laughs> so it, it went really like that, I think, most of the people. Uh, I, I guess I want to turn to the, the, the visual language of this film, the production design. I mean, uh, it, it's impossible not to think about Iranian cinema as we're watching your film, but also hints of Canadian cinema as, as well. And so I, I guess I'm just curious first. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there, the film is very beige, but then on the other hand, <laughs> I've never seen such an exquisite Tim Hortons. <laughs> and so I guess I, I'm, I'm curious how you talked about the look of the film, what sort of correspondences you found between, you know, Winnipeg and what you took away from when you were there in Iran. Yeah, well, that's great. I mean, uh, that was sort of a, a shared experience between Piruz and Ila and myself. And uh, when I first went to Tehran, one of the things that really struck me was how much it resembled Winnipeg. Um, it was all of these beige structures somehow echoed back to the city I grew up in. And uh, Ilan Piruz had a similar encounter of Winnipeg when they went for the first time. And so this kind of architectural echo, these, these brutalist modernist structures in beige, that was kind of like the tuning fork uh, for the whole thing. But then, of course, you know, I, I, I sort of spent a lot of time uh, thinking, you know, like checking out buildings and, you know, looking for angles and sort of figuring out how, uh, how to block around different spaces and this kind of thing. But it was... Uh, it was very much that, that kind of architectural echo between the two cities, which was kind of key for me. And, and of course, it's all about cinematic language to a very large extent. Like it's, a, it's you know, we think of the film as like a Venn diagram or a duck-billed platypus or a Hawaiian pizza, where it's this kind of like merging of spheres, you know? So, so the Tim Hortons is, yes, Tim Hortons, but it's merged with uh, an Iranian chai khone, you know? So, it, it's always this merging of spheres. And this was, in fact, a large part of our writing was sort of figuring out, like, where is the vaguest zone in which we can put these two things? And so, yes, there's a lot of Kiarostami, Mohsen Mahmalbaf, Jafar Panahi, Sorhab Shahid Soles in the movie. But I would also say there's a lot of uh, Jacques Tati in the film. There's some Guy Madden in the movie. Um, there's a great Winnipeg director who I love, John Paskovich. We sort of thought of him as a really important uh, parent of this movie. Um, and, and some Chantal Ackerman and uh, all, all manner of stuff. I, and I always say that, you know, uh, Iranian cinema emerges out of a thousand years of poetry and Winnipeg cinema emerges out of 50 years of discount furniture commercials. <laughs> um, and, and it's kind of absurd to put all of these together, right? I mean, there's something kind of ridiculous about putting these together, but it's also kind of beautiful because that's actually our world, right? We're all here, we're all alive, all at the same time. We all come from these different perspectives, and, and in our lives, we do sort of merge in these kind of, we mix. There's a métissage that happens, and that's kind of a, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, maybe we can uh, take some audience questions. Uh, if you have any questions, just raise your hand, and a mic will come to you right here. I was just going to ask um, for Matthew, um, the treatment of Quebec in this movie versus 20th century uh, was, I felt quite different. Uh, and so I just wanted to ask about how Quebec and Quebec culture is portrayed in that film versus this one. Do you work for the government? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, my first feature, 20th century sort of Quebec is kind of the uh, incarnation of all goodness on the planet. Um, and in this movie, it's something else. It's a positive and or neutral experience. Um, I don't know, I mean, I, again, there's a lot of, there's, I, again, I would bring this back to cinematic language, you know, it, it's, uh, there is an element of Quebecois cinema at work in this film, for sure. Um, there's a lot of films made in Quebec that usually follow a kind of solo, maladjusted bachelor protagonist 
on a kind of self-destructive mission into nothingness. Um, and usually there's a lot of post-referendum disappointment surrounding this person, and, and they sort of have no meaning and no expression and no, uh, and just unending, uh, like, uh, uh, just, uh, inconsolable suffering and solitude. Um, and so I was trying to invoke that, I guess. Maybe Sylvain can, has produced a number of these films, in fact. Maybe he can. <laughs> he would be a better person to answer. That's true. <laughs> But both of these films are also um, preoccupied with biography, too. Um, it, for those of you who haven't seen the 20th century, I encourage you to. But um, it is a kind of fictionalized portrait of a former prime minister. And obviously, this, this film is autobiographical. So it, I mean, is, is just that a, a coincidence? Are you um, interested in pursuing biography in cinema? Yeah, I would say that's that's true of all of all of my shorts. Even um, I, I'm really interested in sort of the relationship between I don't, I don't know. I guess you could say reality and cinematic artifice. Um, that's what I really love. I love cinematic language. That's kind of my what really animates all of my work. And and I'm always interested in you know you feed reality through some kind of prism, and it comes out as an image, you know, and we, we speak a lot about authenticity and credibility in cinema, and that movie, of course, is a historical film, but, you know, in no way is it fed through any kind of simulacrum of Spielbergian credibility. The, the artifice is very much on display. You'd never mistake that for the factual record. And so that, I feel, is a preoccupation, actually, in fact, of a lot of Iranian films as well, uh, a lot of these films that we are referencing in in this project um, are always are also very skeptical about uh, cinematic uh, the simulacrum and 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 the cinematic uh, authenticity and there's always this sort of desire to play with the artifice you know and <clears throat> a lot of times we go into a movie expecting credibility right like and and everything that sort of <laughs> you know, breaks the simulacrum is bad, like a continuity error is bad, a stilted wooden performance is bad, you know, uh, all this kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm kind of really interested in that stuff. I'm sort of interested in, um, you know, what happens if we change cast in the last scene of the movie, right? Um, it, it's, it's about sort of invoking the artifice and, and exploring its poetic qualities. And I think that as we go on in cinema, that's something that we'll think about more and more because, of course, the space of the simulacrum, I think, has, has abandoned cinema to some degree. I feel like that's, the simulacrum is moving elsewhere. And so uh, I, I feel like sort of embracing cinematic art, artifice is a way of, uh, I, think, I think there's, there's exciting new poetries that we can uh, pull out of that, new ways of looking at things. Um, and that's my hope, anyway. You had a question right here? Um, thank you. I was wondering um, about the title, the Farsi version and the English version. Besides setting up the humor, you know, beautifully, what else? What caused you know this difference in translation? That's great. Yeah. So the title in Farsi is Avoze Bughalamun, which uh, how would we translate it? Uh, a song of the turkey, something like that. <laughs> um, so yeah. So it's it's interesting. I mean, th this. This, um, there's a few answers I can give, um, but the first, first and foremost is uh, actually maybe Alva, maybe you want to tell the, uh, you know, tell the story of Bob and Abad. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of our uh, writing and uh, things happen spontaneously, and uh, I think the one that stuck with us the most is um, is kind of. The last scene where uh, the Hafez Amgosar, the Turkey uh, seller, sings, um, and we had not scripted this or planned, and he just showed up and on the day, and he said, "You know, um, I would like to sing uh, for you guys." And we said, "Okay, sure, yes." So once we finished our day, uh, you know, we turned off the lights and we just, you know, rolled the camera and just, uh, you know, listened to him sing, and we were just. Uh, you know, amazed by uh, the experience. And afterwards in the editing room, it became so essential, you know, that, that something that brought everything together. 
Um, so that's that's what inspired this um, this title. Yeah, that was our little. That was sort of the. It, it's sort of one of those magical things that can happen when you're very when you listen very closely to your collaborators and how they feel about a thing. Um, there are these little miracles that happen, and that was one that yes, we had no. You know, when we shot that, we had no idea where it would go, but n now we really feel like it's sort of you know it's kind of key to the whole thing working. So the title in Farsi is in a way a tribute to to this man who sings for his <laughs> it's his dead birds. Um, <laughs> But also the turkey is kind of an interesting thing, right? I mean, like, uh, you know, in English, the turkey refers to the country of Turkey, but in Turkish, it refers to India, I believe, right? It's Hindi. Hindi, Hindi. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think in Portuguese, it's like the bird refers to the Netherlands or something like that. So no one really knows where this bird is from, and, and, and we kind of like that. We kind of like that this bird seems to walk uh, between all nations. Um, and and then of course I love this apocryphal story uh, about Benjamin Franklin wanting the turkey to be the national bird of the United States, and he believed that the bald eagle was a bird of low moral character who would <laughs> rob from the nests of other birds. But but with the turkey you get community, you know. With the turkey you get solidarity. So that appealed to us. Uh, yep, right in the, the middle. Hi, um, well, this is loud, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for a beautiful picture. And to me, one of the layers of the film was about an immigrant experience, specifically in North, in North America. And from what I can tell, two of you are Canadian on that stage, yet two of you are Iranian. And I was wondering if you guys tried to infuse, infuse anything about being an immigrant into the film. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's it, I love that you have that reading. Um, I mean, maybe you have something to say about. It. I, I uh, for us, we 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 you know we were sort of working on a we were approaching this material from a position of n no borders at all, and and this movie for us is about absolute belonging. You know, um, so it, it it's it's uh, it's about connection on a much wider scale. So the, we didn't really think about it that way, but maybe you have. Yeah, I mean, uh, like here, um, Canada is a country made up of all immigrants. I mean, everybody immigrant immigrated there at some point. Um, so, but that wasn't like our, you know, off point. But the idea of home and longing for home uh, is is there for for sure. But you said that the cast was all friends. How did you all meet, or is that too long of a story to discuss? And also, what's your, your references to your humor? Because you have an amazing sense of humor. I want to know how you got that from. I, I'm just funny. <laughs> it's from Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, how did we all meet? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we met kind of through Sylvain, first and foremost. And, uh, and yeah, we, just, we now spend uh, all our time together. Um, we we uh, really you know just I, I don't know how else to explain it. We're just um, yeah. I mean I, I I will say this though that uh, you know it's us, but also everyone else on on the crew uh, uh, and the cast. Uh, we're all like really close, and I'm a big believer that you should always make films with your best friends because uh, I feel like that's why people make films. Actually, you know that's the 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 creative gesture is one that really is better, especially if cinema, which is so profoundly collaborative. I mean, that's the essence of cinema, right? Despite the fulminating Napoleon film bros, Napoleonic film bros we might, you know, encounter. No film is made that way. It's always a collaboration and always a collective expression. And, and this for us was, uh, was a really beautiful uh, experience together. Yeah, and we, uh, a lot of times it was, we would think of things that we thought the other would find amusing and funny. So it, it's, it's been kind of, uh, that, that was our process of writing too. It's like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> finding ways to make, make each other laugh, uh, just as, you know. We, we all have like very dark humors too. <laughs> I have to say the restaurant of Emela is a great meeting place. And we, we met a lot of our friends there and like the, and Piruz also is a 
amazing cook. And the, the parties he chose he as, a, as his place are just amazing. And so it's, it's, a, it's no, but don't, don't call him to, uh, it's a big sense of community that we, uh, that we built like over years. It's really like, you know, little by little, it's, it's like this. Also, I mean, Montreal is such a special place. Um, I mean, I, I used to live in Vancouver, and uh, I spent a long time there, but I couldn't uh, find my community there for some reason, you know? And you, it's kind of place that you have to work all the time to just survive. But Montreal, somehow, we, we managed to live and connect. And uh, it's quite easy, uh, I it's find. It's cheaper. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Uh, we have time for one more question. Um, I'll get, I think I called in you in the middle. Yep. I'll say something. My, my parents who don't live in Winnipeg all anymore, but my father always says, Winnipeg's not the asshole of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> I happen to love Winnipeg, and I love Winnipeggers, but I want to just applaud um, all the little Winnipeg-isms in there, like the genie's cake and the old Dutch potato chips and the Nutty Club candy um, and the buildings, and sort of you captured the essence of it and also the immigrant experience that's so pronounced there. I thought it was beautiful and... I've always said Winnipeg may not be gorgeous, but the people there are extraordinary. So just congrats. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, that's really nice. I mean, uh, it, it's true that um, there are little narcotic uh, gifts for Winnipeggers watching the, the thing. And, uh, you know, there's these little moments that the Winnipeggers will have the fullest pleasure of that moment. And, <laughs> Similarly, you know, there's uh, moments that Iranians will have the fullest pleasure of that specific moment, you know, and Francophones will have the fullest pleasure of, you know, sort of jokes for everybody, but nothing really hinges on any of that. But, uh, but I'm really glad you're here and you had that experience of it. All right, I'm afraid we have to wrap it up, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you.